no sign of the chickens. I just came back from Switzerland to pick up the trailer. They had food and water. But I came back and the door was open of the coop. Which I'm pretty sure was closed. So I don't know what happened. Warm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've never seen predators here. Not on the camera, uh, the trail cam that I have on the tree there. And also there's no s any sign of scratching around the coop. You know, if a fox wants to dig, there's nothing like that. So I don't think it's a predator. I mean, I'm hoping they are just somewhere else going a bit further than normal. Because usually they're just hanging around here. But I haven't seen them. So I'll wait to, for tonight. They usually go back to the coop around 8, 8.30. I don't know. A fox could have opened the fence. I mean, the latch is it's quite high up there and quite sturdy I can't believe it and a fox would first dig I believe I think I hear something the sound of happiness I think they're under in the bushes over there
little tree had to go. It was getting too big. Now I can back up here with the trailer. So Kiara is coming here in a little bit. She's local and she's a professional forager. So she's gonna show me what are edibles here on the property and perhaps cook something about it with it. I'm curious. It's white wine and there's Artemisia, which is mugwort, you know it, infused in it, yeah, so nice. I love this. I'm working a lot with mugwort these days. This is for you, you can keep it six months if you want and then drink yeah. it. The more the better, at least until the August the 6th. The more I need to wait a little bit, if experimenting so, still. Yeah, from oh, August the 6th you can start drinking if you want, but if you can, wait for six months. And it's even better. It's just red wine. Oh, it's so in six months it's good. It's not before six months or anything. No, to. it's not before August the 6th. Okay, yeah. so because you have to wait at least six weeks. Yeah. But if you can wait six months, it's much better. Uh, okay. So but and when does it go bad? I mean, it doesn't. No, it doesn't better. really. But uh, I suggest. We need not to put it in the fridge. No, no, I'll just leave it outside. Yeah. Nice. Yes. This is um, Rumex acetosa and it's 
I love it. It's sour. It grows, it's very common, it grows everywhere in this kind of open situations, you know, in the fields, in the meadows. And you can see it has these very um, crunchy leaves. It's also juicy. And you should taste it, actually. <laughs> see? And they have this typical shape which is triangular, but then it has two lobes at the end. It's been a snail so, there or not? Hmm? Is that a yeah, snail? <laughs> I guess so. We're not the only ones foraging. <laughs> yeah, we can pick it for our salad. Actually, yeah. I forgot the basket, of course. The I got I've got one. Yeah. No, no, I have it here. I just oh, right. typical to these moments of the year. It's actually called a uh, common name St. John's lily because it flowers now around the 24th of June. It's protected here in this region of Italy so we cannot pick it. And it so in English it's birch, right? You know why you have so many of them here? Are you aware? I don't know. No, it's all <laughs> beach and birch here. Yes. And it's very typical to these situations where there used to be some human activity, you know, cows maybe. It's, it was a pasture here, but it's been abandoned. So the reason why you have so many betulla is because it arrives, it's the first one to arrive whenever there are abandoned meadows. This is one of the most powerful medicinal plants we have. Ipericum perforatum. If you touch the flower bud and the leaf, it will stain your hand in purple. You see? Oh wow, yeah. This is the, the okay. most powerful compound, Ipericina. So, Ipericum is great for everything skin related. In external use, but in internal use, it's great for depression. Vicha. This is great. Tastes like fresh baby peas. So great in salads. Slightly bitter, nice texture. Mm -hmm. Looks beautiful. I mean, you can make the salad very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, try and taste it at different altitudes, like yeah. on the hills or on the mountain, because it grows from zero to two thousand meters. It has different taste according to where it grows. Mm -hmm. This one is one of my favorite, but I wouldn't eat it here. But this is exactly where it likes to grow when people step on it. So you find it on the streets, trails, but this is plantago, plantain, and it's one of the best herbs for taste. Tastes like champignon mushroom. Beach. Beach. Fagus sylvatica. It's very interesting because you see these are the fruits yeah. and in the fall they open 
and they release three seeds which you can use just like peanuts so you can peel them toast them and sprinkle some salt on them 80 percent is fat and the rest is a bit of protein and something else so very energetic food they are this so beautiful yes what can we do with that so we don't pick it because it grows very slowly and it's super important for the forest to retain the water yeah so we don't we don't harvest it good it's basically a forest in miniature it looks like a, a palm tree forest yes there's so many type of mosses yeah See, this was the first one. Yeah. They similar. are similar. They're not too far. But this is the leaf of this flower. Mm. Okay. Which is Fiteuma betonicifolium. And it's very typical to this region of Italy. They do a traditional soup made right. of these leaves, even the root, and they do it with butter and cheese. Gooseberries, right? Yeah. These are coming, yeah, these will be ready in a few weeks. Oh, look, these are red. Are you aware of the toxic and deadly plants that grow in your Not at land? all. <laughs> okay, I think that, maybe that's you the should. hemlock is deadly, that's quite deadly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you can, there's three that look alike, isn't it? Flowers type, but you can recognize them by the red dots on the stem. On the stem, exactly. Yeah, purple dots. But you also have a field of Colchicum autumnale, this one. Ah. And of... The uh, lily of the valley, is that or not? Uh, also lily of the valley. You have both here. And you also have that one, you see? That yeah. looks like Entian. Which one, the yellow one? Or? The, the flower or the leaves? Or the both? whole plant. Right. The whole plant. See, but you can recognize it because the position of the leaves is alternate. So mm -hmm. you have left, top right, top left, top right. It's the first time I see a blueberry in now. Uh, Yeah, I mean, they don't grow abundantly. The plant is, but the fruit is not. Yeah, they like acid soils. Yeah. So you learn something about your soil. Yeah. When you know the plants. Yeah. Here's more.
Mm -hmm. Nice. And maybe we can also do some bread with yeah. cheese. I just couldn't find a knife to cut the bread. Oh, there's a, it's up there. That's a bread knife. Why is it? Ah, okay. Yeah. Lovely. Nice cocktails. And it's all from your land. Yeah. You mean the salad is completely from the land, right? Yeah. So how do you call this cocktail? Um it's bleeding the, those berries. Beautiful. Yes, it's packed of a vitamin C. Cheers. I don't know. Cheers. Cheese, it's really good cheese. I think my smell, uh, how do you call them, it's, it's not so refined. Mm. Yeah, just don't eat it. <laughs> okay, maggio ciondolo in Italian.
no axe yet. I've put in a fake axe. These are wooden axe. It's a kind of, well I mean, people are saying that it makes them want to lay axe. I'm not sure if that's true. Um, or at least teach them to not eat their own eggs. I think that's the main reason. But um, yeah, still waiting. I don't think they lay them outside because they're not outside every day. Um, and there, yeah, I don't think they do that. So. Patience. I haven't planted any potatoes yet. I'm gonna do a row here. If it's okay with you. I need some compost, but compost pile I had over there kind of disappeared with the septic system or it's all mixed up so I think I'll have to buy something
Yeah, this will do for now. Let it compact a bit. Maybe there's some rain coming today. But this was always a very tricky bit in winter because the road was really like that. So when there's snow or ice, you'll drift off the hill, and especially with a trailer, it's very dangerous. But now it's level and uh, it's going to be much better. Um, add some gravel later, but let it compact first a bit.
Gonna mix a fine gravel and coarser gravel with dust and sand, which compacts really well. Uh, they mix that for the road. And um, yeah, I'm gonna try it out here. It's like, yeah, it seems to hold up pretty well. I need quite a lot, so, but I wanted to try it out first. I'll probably get deliveries when I'm really finishing up the road. Uh, but first I need a compactor as well to compact that part and the one over there. Okay, I got it out, not entirely but far enough because I want the ground sloping here down just a little bit and then have a gutter here on the end so the water can flow uh, besides the house and this big rock was preventing it was going up quite a bit but now I chopped it off until here and that's enough. I'm gonna leave in there.
proper rain coming down. Let me show you. Rain levers are working. Nothing filling. And there's also nothing coming out here. coming from the roof. French grain is not doing much right now. That's going much slower. bread I baked last week so you can see it's brown it got some Nutella on it it smells very nice when it comes out of the toaster um, because of the cinnamon and coffee that I put in it's not really a flavor that you taste but cinnamon is obviously very fragrant so it's perfect with a Nutella sandwich like that it's not Nutella Thank you. 